towards a monetary ecosystem. In other words, let's learn something from nature instead of fighting it. We're going from this to this. This is more efficient. This has more timber per unit of time, per year. Right? However, if you drop a cigarette, it's all gone. Okay? You better don't smoke here. So let's go back to where we started. Sustainable development goals. I believe that we have two things that we can do now. One of them, we can do this, and we should avoid this. And I'm making the claim we shouldn't go halfway. With half the quantity of money, you're going to get half the result. Uh-uh, not good enough. Not good enough. Just like you don't go to space, you know, with half the equipment. You either go or you don't go. And I think the time has come where we can go. Back to the pipeline. Remember how we talked about? There is an elephant in the room. There's an elephant in the room. OK, that's the elephant. How about creating a second currency issued by the government to deal with the sustainable development goals that is not created through bank debt? <gasps> what a horrible thing to think. With complete heterodoxy. There exists no theoretical framework for economics with multiple currencies. None. In the capitalist or the, capital, or the, or the communist one. Unknown territory. And that's where we are. OK, we are psychologically trapped. We have been brainwashed for 5,000 years to believe we need a single currency. And it's brainwash. And the best accelerated form of it is taking the degree in economics. They brainwash you to the end on a single currency. Never, never mentioned. Without mentioning what money is and all that other good stuff. So there are some problems with the current system, right? You can read them quickly. I don't have to go into it. Uh, you know all these things, I presume. And we're dealing with a paradigm shift. We are moving into a world with economic crisis, with social crisis, with rising marketplaces of a sharing nature, and with the blockchain technology. I'm going to be talking about blockchain in a few minutes. Bancor protocol it is a, it is a blockchain that makes it possible for users to define the money that they want to create by putting several reserves in it. One of the reserves could be, for example, conventional money. And the other reserves could be something else that you have to create and that you can invent. And there's a whole range of things. You can create a dual economy. And we can do it with blockchain. Everybody knows what blockchain is? You've probably all heard of Bitcoin and say, but behind it is blockchain. The important thing is not Bitcoin, the important thing is blockchain. Okay? And this is not my claim. Blockchain user issued currency will change everything. He's right. And now we have that. With the, with the Bancor protocol, we have a user-issued currency available to every single one of you. Okay? It's the first user-issued currency ever. Huh? This is new. This is really new. We never had it, even in 
ancient times. People did not issue currency. Communities did. Could do it individually. So I'm also sending you a paper with a proposal for uh, something that we're going to plan to do in Europe in three countries uh, at the end of this year, which is introducing a farmer coin. There have been 600 suicides of farmers in France due to financial reasons. In Belgium, there are 400 of them. It's a small country. Okay? I don't know what the other statistics are, but we have a rash of suicides due to financial reasons in farmers. And here we have the solution. Uh, the blockchain is guaranteed convertibility, liquidity, and price discovery. I'll leave all that stuff in the white paper that you're, going to, that you're going to have. And it makes it, and it should be managed as a commons for and by its users. We can do that too. How? Thanks to this lady. A blockchain is a, uh, a smart contract. And a blockchain is a program that it cannot be changed once it's launched in the world. It's frozen in, and it does its thing automatically without having needing to talk to another person. You can actually, you and your blockchain tells, I'm going to give it, give it back or buy it. That you can do, or you can own it, but that's it. So, and it actually changes a completely different way of reorganizing society. The banking system has invested $15 billion dollars in the last two years on blockchain technology to try to capture the things for the banks. This is not part of that. This is the exception. Okay? So it gives you flavor, what we're dealing with. Okay? All right. This lady is the only woman who has received the Nobel Prize of Economics in 2010. And she died in 2012. The poor thing. So it didn't last her very much. And it's all about commons, how to manage commons. How many of you have heard of the tragedy of the commons? OK, not more? Have you heard? Nobody? It is the most quoted article in nature, in history. Millions of quotations, millions. It's wrong. It's bullshit. There's no evidence. People don't deal with commons that way. Okay? Fine. So here are the principles. I'm not going to go all of them. Uh, we know how to manage a commons, and we can reenact this on the internet. So group market is a process of actually having subgroups of people that have their own currency. That's a, a group market is a place where you have multiple currencies functioning, like in Egypt or like in the Central Middle Ages, electronically, with smart blockchains. So, you know, completely automatically. That's one of the... This exists. Huh? This is not a theory. This is not about the future. This is operational. Okay? Uh, here is the lead market, which is the most successful one that I have found so far. Um, it's uh, the mothers in Israel. They're all mothers, and they're part of the lev market, and they have 20,000 participants, um, and they have exchanged 207 deals, 7,000 deals uh, so far, with a volume of so many shekels and bet thousand transactions per day. This is working now. How many of you have a mobile phone? How many of you don't have a mobile phone? All of you do. That's it. It's the only thing that you need. A mobile phone and an internet connection and you're actually part of the future. Now. Okay? Here is this left market, what they're actually selling to people. People make their own little advertisings and their stuff. Who knows what an ICO is? ICO, ISO. In initial coin. Uh, 
offering. It's like the IPO, initial. Uh, yes, okay, thank you. Um, I'm getting tired, apparently. You must be too. Um, anyway, the IPO, the, uh, sorry, the coin sale of the first sale that makes it possible to use the protocol that I'm talking about is going to happen on the 30th of March. And you can all participate if you want to. You can actually become owners. Okay? It's uh, through um, crowdfunding. So it happens online. You can... This is happening now. On the 30th of May. So let me bring to the conclusion. This is a metaphor. Okay, I've told you what things are not metaphors. This is not. A, this is a metaphor. The sun plays the same role as the bunker protocol, the internet, the Ethereum smart space. It's based built on the Ethereum uh, platform. Okay, so that plays the role of the sun. The sun doesn't go anywhere like that randomly in the world. There are some governance issues, and the governance. In other words, it gives you some laws on what you need to follow for, and you can say that the sky, the, the sun is going up in a particular circle this particular month at this particular day, and all that is calculatable. So this is the rules. That's, the sky is the governance platform. In other words, uh, Ellen Rostrom thing. The Banco Reserve is a healthy soil. A community is an apple tree. Every week, there are a bunch of apples coming up that are mature, are ready to play. And the members exchange apples. Okay. Anyway, that's the, the metaphor for the whole thing. I claim that the Bangor Protocol makes possible a new, is actually a paradigm shifter. That is what changed my vision two weeks ago. This is brand new. I discovered it two weeks ago, okay? And uh, it is becoming public now at the end of the month. Do you know about the Hanseatic League? Does it ring a bell, anybody? Can someone tell me? What is it? Trade Pardon? Was it trade a trade association, yes. In where? Operated at the Northern Yes. The, North, the Northern Trade Association that lasted Yeah, okay, I have to. It's, it's a trade association that was done in, uh, in, in this part of the world, actually, okay, in the northern Europe, including Germany, Holland, Belgium, England, London. Um, and what happened was that while the countries were all in turmoil and actually very locally administered by local lords, they were dealing, they had their own court, they had their own system, they had their own laws between themselves that actually makes trading possible. And that is what made this part of the world actually wealthy. Um, the gradual shift is happening through conventional money. You can put conventional money into your blockchain and make it work for you. So here is the Hanseatic League, see all the red dots? That's where we are. It was done in 1267 and 1669. There were two major waves of it, where basically the people themselves organized themselves outside of the uh, official uh, administrations, the lords, to actually provide their own money system, their own their own um, um, legal system, their own court system, that they made trading possible. And this part of the world became very wealthy as a consequence. This is the oldest city in, uh, in uh, Germany, was actually Lübeck, that joined the uh, Hanseatic League. Here is Amsterdam. Uh, I think the existing system 
has a little bit too much to do. It's a little bit overloaded. It's getting in trouble a little more, rather quickly. And I believe it's time to switch over. That's obsolete. That's not. So the long view now. We just finished the Cold War. You may have noticed, right? Uh, some of you are here thanks to that. The Industrial Age is 250 years. There were two ways of organizing the Industrial Age, the capitalist and the communist. They were both doing the Industrial Age. The modernist worldview dates back to the Renaissance and basically is the visions that we have of human role in the world. Okay? That is where we are still functioning on. We are basically, uh, the values that are the official values uh, tend to be from, generated from that time period. Rationalism, and particularly hyper-rationalism, I am claiming that only reason is the appropriate way to approach reality is dating from the Greeks, 2,500 years. And patriarchy is 5,000 years, started in Sumer. Writing, patriarchy, and uh, debt and interest calculations date back 5,000 years ago. That's when it started. So we're in the process of burying that stuff. Now, we're switching. And we have a choice. I believe that we have a choice between a planetary wisdom civilization or a massive regression to more primitive forms of organizing society. I believe we all like that first one in this audience. They need a new balance between the masculine and the feminine. And here are some, the papers, the seminal paper, the Bunker Protocol is in your files. And I have one application of it on basic income. Uh, my email address, not hard to find if you know my name. Uh, <laughs> these are some of the books. I perpetrated about a dozen books. Uh, in, I, I, I write, I'm writing in five languages, so I've perpetrated a, a few books in this field. These are the two I recommend to you guys, okay? One of them is, uh, this one is a report to the Club of Rome of the EU chapter. That was the original version, the other ones are translations. And for those interested on the psychological part, because that's the systemic part, in other words, the issue of the balance between yin and yang, the, of the, the role of women, among other things, and the patriarchy, you'll find this in this book and in other translations of it. So thank you very much. You're to referring ask. to the, the application of Bitcoin. Yes, a bit. And but this is not Bitcoin. So this is Ethereum. I repeat that this is not a Bitcoin. Actually, I'm against Bitcoin. I believe it is a false flag. Bitcoin. This is based on Ethereum, and Ethereum has solved the problem of overcomputing capacity that is needed for doing this thing, and this is resident top of Ethereum. Individuals are the ones who create the currency. You, your neighbor, anybody. That's the difference. That's the change. We're not waiting for government. Don't wait for government. This is the way to do it. Okay? And you can put in $10. It's fine. And you can put nothing in and still use it. Maybe you have heard about the Venus Project. Uh, just recently got an award from the United Nations for a Sustainable Community uh, Organization. Yes. I would like to hear a comment from you how feasibly feasible you think it is, it's a resource-based economy, whether it can actually profit from the Bank of Pro Protocol. Uh, I happen to have met the author of the Venus Project, an American, right? Yeah. Uh, an elderly gentleman, about my age, I would say. Um, so I think we're all in favor of it. But I'm going back to the statement of Ban Ki-moon. How will you pay for it? 
and there is no answer until now. Mm. So if you know him, send him the bone call protocol. If you can, he can use it for, for that purpose, if that's what he wants to do. It requires you to understand the bone call protocol. Okay? So you need these two papers, the bottom parts, to give you the answer to your question. But once you have digested those, you will have the answer. And it is possible to do directly 